Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are going to do something special. We are going to break down a lake, but not just any lake, the largest freshwater lake in the world. We're gonna go out here, try and find some great big bass. We've got a special guest for you too. It's gonna to be a lot of fun. Come along. All right, guys, today we are out on Lake Superior. This is our good friend, Kobe Pellerito. We are chasing smallmouth. The last travel video we did for you, we were on a really small body of water. We talked about how to break that down. Today is the exact opposite. This place is over 20 million acres. It's huge. We're gonna go out here and try and find some smallmouth blind. Neither one of us has ever been up here we're just gonna wing it. Come along. Obviously the most difficult part of coming out on a waterway like this is knowing where to start. What we're gonna do is start in the backs of bays and work out. The only difference between this, between going into the back of a cove here and going to the back of a cove at your local lake is that a cove here might be 30 or 40 miles long. So you've gotta drive the truck between them instead of the boat. But it, Beyond that, it's really the same thing. We're gonna go all the way to the back, see if the fish have moved up, and then backtrack out from there. The concept is exactly the same. Two of them with them. Two of them with them. They're little, but there's two of them with them. Good job. I don't care that it's 12 inches. I'm just happy we got one. Nice. You know what I mean? Like First one of the day. First one of the lake. Of the lake, that's true, yeah. Whole new region. We decided to push back up in here. Find a little bit warmer water, a little protected. She's not very big, but it's a start. Like we go, you know, a couple miles and then it'll probably be like 10 times more. Yeah. Right. That's just crazy. Did you? Yeah. Did you? We blasted it. Like, we hammered it. <sighs> Spotted a ball of bait down there, we turned around and we caught one of them. Or who was eating the bait at least. Wait, you guys didn't think that Lake Superior was going to be a one day operation. Day two, there's Kobe, Cece, we're all hanging out in the camper. We've switched coves, if you will. It's gonna be a lot of road miles in between those two coves. We're sticking to this pattern, trying to find fish. Two coves. In the two coves, in the backs of the bays. We saw success, Kobe caught one, but we definitely were not in the right place. Our water temps in the middle of that bay were 46 degrees. We found some warm water in the backs in the creeks, but we couldn't really get access to the fish. There were some bridges in the way, so we are trying again. We'll see what happens. That's what I saw. That's what you saw? 
day two, stop number two. We've had to launch into a river. Kobe's up there spotting, making sure we don't crash. We're in a whopping two feet of water. We're headed out into the lake. Access is difficult up here. Uh, there's not a lot of people fishing this stuff. There are not a lot of boat ramps. So we had to launch up the river. We're idling out into the lake, but we've got a water temp of 53 degrees. It's warm enough. Hopefully this is the one. We're on that same pattern. We're gonna end up in the very back of a bay. We're looking for smallmouth that are moving up, moving in, trying to get out of the big water. We'll see if this is the one. I've got a good feeling. <laughs> but we're getting there. A little vibration X, mega bass. At least we're around fish, we're getting closer. Stop number two, struck out. <laughs> we're gonna make a shot at stop number three. We don't even know where that is yet. We're gonna get the map back out. We got into some pike today. We fished some really, really good bassy looking stuff and they were not there. So we're idling back up this river, get it back on the trailer, look at the map. We're gonna try again. 20 million acres. They've gotta be here somewhere. Switch spots again. Still just sticking that little tiny Kitek. Little tiny guppy head, nice fish. This one was way up shallow. We were focusing on the backs of the bays. Now where we are, we're at the back of a bay, but it's got some current pushing out of this little canal. These fish are right up shallow. Again, giant body of water, the most giant body of water. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get spun out. I mean, we're. We've been spun out most of the day, mm -hmm. running the right stuff and just not running into the fish just mm -hmm. because of how large the water is. But one by one, we're slowly getting them. And then I set the hook on one more little rat small mouth. <laughs> I was so close to selling you. Is it a large mouth? No. Uh, sure. Anyway. 
another one. Putting little bites together. Little screw head. <laughs> what did you do different? <laughs> Just fish a hundred docks and catch one. Nice work. Here we go again. It's day three. We are sticking with our pattern, so we found a pretty good consistent theme. We've been catching decent number of fish after yesterday, kind of got some things dialed in, but they weren't the right size. So what we've done now is we've kind of relocated to another bay, another section, um, and we've taken that and we're gonna apply a similar pattern to the same area and kind of check based on the conditions and, and dial in things a little bit once we're here and break it down and see if we can find some of the right size fish. One thing that uh, Matt asked me to kind of mention and talk about is, you know, when you look at a place like Superior, kind of like we've mentioned, it's, you know, over 20 million surface acres. When you look at an area like that, it can be overwhelming, obviously, because there's so much water, it's so much bigger than most places that we ever tackle for bass. Um, but something that myself and Matt have kind of talked about a little bit is if you were to take that lake and pretend to downscale it, pretend to make it 500 acres instead of 5 million, you would pick similar areas within that lake that you would if it were you know the same giant lake so you see a cove or a cut on the shore you're going to go pick that area that cove might still be massive once you get there but you're still going to pick a similar area and then once you get within that cove then you're able to break it down to smaller portions and say okay within that cove here's where that first couple docks are that are going to be a good stretch here's that you know, little point that kind of sticks out in the back of the cove. Here's a little break with some rock along it. You know, you're able to break it down. So rather than be overwhelmed and try and fish all the water, limit yourself, or not necessarily limit yourself, but focus your attention on a smaller area and pick those keys that are gonna be within a reasonable fishing distance. And like you said, on a downscaled size. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep on plugging. We're gonna see what we can find today. Hopefully we'll catch some of the big ones. Stay tuned. Well, this is not a good start. <laughs> We're good, I think he's right on the nose. Maybe? Yeah, don't even worry about it, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing wrong, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what we're here for, I swear. Still haven't found the ones we're after, but day three, new place. We're all the way in the back of the bay. We're actually going up the creek out of the bay. Water's about 55 degrees in here, and there's at least one in here. Oh, 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 oh,
nice fish. We are working hard for them around here, but it's fun. We'll take it. That one choked that little 2.8 kite. It is, dude. I might look into get, getting 360. After three long days on Lake Superior, we are finally wrapping it up. Finally got back in the camper, started pulling footage, and of course discovered the audio for the final clip is missing. Happens all too often. But you know what? That is an open door to get to talk about some other things and to show you some more amazing footage. We'll come right back to that. The long and short of it is we had an awesome time on Lake Superior. It was very challenging. I mean, there is so much acreage out there. There is so much water. Those fish could be anywhere. We're also a little bit early for those fish based on water temperature. It would be ideal if it was just a little farther along. But all in all, even though we never got into that, you know, like life-changing wolf pack of fish, we got to experience some amazing places and we caught a bunch of fish and we caught some really nice fish. Kobe, who came along in this video, Kobe is an amazing smallmouth fisherman. You guys didn't really get to see that highlighted in this video because we were on this new fishery and we were exploring and looking for new options. But Kobe is a guide. He guides in Michigan and Wisconsin. He's an amazing smallmouth fisherman. I fished with them some other days on some other lakes and we had a ball and as soon as I stop talking we'll run some of that footage out to the end of the video for you but that guy catches big ones you should keep up with him going back to Lake Superior you know just wrapping it back up we caught him on a handful of baits but what I really want to focus on before I talk about those baits is how we broke it down you're talking about an enormous body of water, and Kobe already touched on this. If you take the map of Lake Superior, or any other Great Lake, or any other large lake, and just pretend it's a 500 acre lake, you would pick the tips of points and the backs of coves, things that look natural, that you would go fish. It doesn't matter that that point is 80 miles long. What matters is that on a big map or a little map, you would pick the same place if you didn't know how large the lake was. Once you've selected a spot, you know, a cove with a big point leading into it, now you zoom in, you realize that's 50 miles long. Well, look at it again. You find your points, you find your coves, you pick the sweet spot and you zoom in. The moral of the story is no matter how big the lake is, it doesn't matter if it's the biggest freshwater lake in the world or your local lake right down the road you break it down the same way and the fish are going to be in the same places it just takes longer on a monster fishery we had a pattern we knew where the fish should be but we had to make a few stops in order to really connect with them and making those stops took several days instead of just running between spots on your local lake now, as far as the baits we tried to power fish all the way through. Uh, not necessarily big baits, but we stayed reaction. So we threw a Kitek a lot, smaller Kitex. Um, Kobe throws a spark shad on a screw head and does amazing with that thing. I threw the Kitek on the screw head and on a standard guppy head, did really well with both. Even caught him on a spinner bait. And what else? We caught him on a square bill, uh, jerk bait. We had a lot of fun out there. Uh, caught some really nice fish. Did not catch those life-changing fish, but we got to experience Lake Superior. We got to break it down for ourselves and find some really neat areas that I think we'll be fishing again in the future. Now, I am gonna wrap it up with a few more fish catches. Like I said, Kobe is a hammer in his own right, and we had had a blast just a few days before. So check some of this out, and then we'll just let it roll out to the end from there. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. 
We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. First one on the other side. Caught her in the little screw head. <laughs> My bad, Matt. It's all good. Nice fish. Oh yeah.